Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. In today's video, I want to show you some more blending techniques, uh, kind of a couple different ways to blend in Photoshop. I think that it can be pretty tricky at times, and I'm starting to adopt a little bit of a new method with some of the paint work that I do, so I want to show you that. Okay, so I've got a new layer, and I'm painting over the canvas. I'm going to start off with the hard round brush and no shape dynamics. I'll show you the settings in here. And that's what I got. Just transfer, pen pressure, pen pressure. So one of the things that I kept facing that was uh, giving me a bit of trouble, I would, if you watch a lot of my uh, paintings on here, I'd oftentimes just start with grayscale and paint over top. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a fun and uh, kind of great way to paint. There's lots of different ways. But one of the things that I noticed, I'd have a lot of problems with getting a painterly feel sometimes or getting my colors just right. So the beauty of painting this way is that you it's a lot easier to work with your colors after you get a good uh, foundational knowledge of uh, you, you know coloring. So uh, which I still have a long ways to go but I'll show you why this uh, works out so well with that. So with the settings I've showed you I've got opacity and flow at 100% no shape dynamics and I'm just painting it with a large brush and I'm kind of getting this uh, cell shading look. Uh, which, you know, they refer to it as in uh, animation. So, you know, if I do this and now I sample, you know, the red and I can get a bounced light source over here, you know, maybe coming up from the uh, the bottom here, I can select from the darker tone and I'm just very lightly pressing. Now, what you're going to have to do to get this just right is adjust your settings to your tablet. And I am using a tablet, obviously. Um, I don't believe you could do this otherwise, so I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so now what happens is if you're getting this where no matter how light you press, you're getting a very dark, dark, uh, in correspondence to your color selected over here, then you need to adjust your tablet settings. Once you get it to where you can press pretty lightly and get maybe half or a third of that or whatever you're comfortable with of that overall tone, then you can start utilizing this effect. Now, the reason why I like this is because whatever you select color wise, that's what you're going to get. And then you can quickly build up from there and you can get a very nice kind of painterly feel. And if it's too saturated, then you can get into your modes and, you know, hue saturation and start dropping your saturation if you want a, you know, more um, just a different feel to the color or whatever. But for anything else, you simply stay right here and you just select and lightly paint back and forth. Just like that. And it's amazing, you can actually get a really good blending by doing this. It just takes a little bit of practice, or I'll be honest, a lot of practice for me because I just didn't quite get the feel of this right away. Now another thing you could do is use like the dodge tool and you can punch up a quick highlight or light source uh, as well as the burn tool and you can darken parts. Well, sometimes it doesn't always switch when I do that. I must pull off that too quick. And you can burn some of the colors in as well. And then you can, again, go back to your selection. I'm holding Alt, by the way, to get the eyedropper. And then I just paint back. So it gives you, a, you know, all this artifacting, or <laughs> I don't know if you say it that way. The artifacts that you see here is something I want, something that I actually like. You know, and when you start getting into digital painting, you'll you'll see that this this is the good stuff right there. So... You don't always want to blend that away. So if you get in the habit of just using uh, a soft brush, you can do this really easily with the soft brush, and I'm going to show you that as well. But if you learn to use this method, you're going to get some nice painterly uh, feel to your work at times. And if I want a nice little specular highlight, and then just sample, and I'll show you. I'm holding Alt, sampling, pressing very light, holding Alt, and I'm sampling that mid-tone that I'm creating each time. And blending out and then if it's too strong I just reverse the process back inward and you know I'm not saying you get it right every single time and I, I need a lot more practice because I've pretty much just started using this method more and more I was just like you know what I got to get the hang of it and I started getting a few good choice effects with it and it's it's uh, definitely something I want to add to my arsenal of painting I don't know that I like that white highlight in there, but I could maybe start with that, maybe dodge it. 
and then I'll show you the blending just because if all else fails it still helps to have this as a backup. I don't recommend overusing it but it is pretty much the way that I would get these effects before if I ran into an area and I couldn't get the right look and I wanted to just smudge it down. I'll show you my settings for this brush and keep in mind always keep my brushes available for download. I'll put that in the descri description below. So this one right here, actually I don't know why I have it on this. Let me go to not small list, large list. Okay. Um, so this is my blending brush smooth. Okay. And I'll show you the settings for that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if I have just transfer put on, see how this is grayed out and I can only select pen pressure. But this isn't what really does the blending. If you if you use it on something like this, you'll probably just get this smudging and smearing effect. It's the scattering that really allows you to blend. What it's doing is it's moving the brush side to side and scattering the effect of the brush, which in turn gives you soft edges, which allows you to blend. So I've got that set to 20%. You can copy these settings, so I'll click that off. And then now you can see if I scale this way up what it's doing, and I'll zoom in so I can show you. So just watch this line right here, and I'm pressing very light. See how it just disappears? So that's that's nice when you maybe get too much texture and there's just parts that you don't want in there. Like I wanted this highlight really soft, so I just lightly press around it. Now again, if I bear down really hard, that's what I get. And you know, and that almost provides a different texture in itself. So uh, Control Alt Z to go back. So that's another handy effect for you. Okay, so now let me show you another blending uh, mode. I'll move this over. We'll do another one. Now keep in mind, you can always take stuff like this. Once you've created it, you can go to Image Adjustment, Hue Saturation, and just simply change the color. So let's, let's just change the color to something like this guy. And let's go ahead and lock Transparency. That keeps us from going outside of the edges of our work, which is nice. And now I want to show you the soft brush effect. Okay, so this is probably the easiest of them all, uh, but I, the reason why I wanted to show it to you secondary to this is I feel you just need to use this in moderation. So we're going to go to a soft airbrush, and unfortunately when I created it, I created it very small, so I keep having to size the brush up. So don't do that. Always save it at the size you think you're going to use the most. Uh, now we'll go to the brush settings. Transfer, pen pressure, pen pressure. So you can probably see a pattern here that I usually leave shape dynamics off my brushes unless I need it. And generally I only use shape dynamics right here when I'm trying to draw something. When I'm painting I almost never use it. Okay, so right here we want to soften up this texture and that's real easy to do with this brush. Now at 100% opacity it's a little bit trickier but you know you could drop this as well. If you just need that added build up you can just drop that right down. So we'll select into here, just brush across there, select through the middle, brush across there, and you can see the texture just disappears immediately. So this, this brush is really quick and easy to use. The only bad thing is, if you paint everything with a very soft feel like this, it's just gonna be a bit more boring. Um, I tend to see a lot of this in like uh, more amateur work, and um, you know, not that I'm some great big wig artist, but I'm just saying that, you know, it seems to be an amateur technique where they just get really excited about soft edges and everything's airbrushed and smooth and, um, which is great. You'll, you'll get some pretty nice effects and there's definitely a time and a place for it. But if everything's just smooth and soft, it's not going to have enough realism or impact. Uh, you need a mix between these, kind of a hybrid, if you will. So, um, just don't get too crazy on just one or the other. So you see you can get a really nice soft airbrush look and a nice smooth uh, purple ball here. So that's that's really all there is to that. I mean it's, it's simply select whatever color you need. Obviously we color shifted here and just selected from this but in no time flat you can you can get some nice soft highlights there. Uh, you can still punch them up with the dodge and burn if you need to. So yeah, there's lots of neat effects there. Now one other thing I want to show you, even though this isn't blending, it still is helpful when you're doing this type of work, is go to Image Adjustments Color Balance, and you can literally control the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights of this object. So if I want to take the shadows and I want to see more blue in it, 
simple as that. If I want to take the mid-tones, which would be more in here, I guess, and I want to see some green, it's going to darken it. If I want to see some cyan, I guess that's going to darken it too. But you can play with this and kind of get a feel for it. Highly powerful tool. I totally recommend messing around with this because once you get a, a good feel for it, it's an insanely great time saver. So I'll just leave that the way it was, but I wanted to show you that real quick. Okay, so now I want to show you kind of the way that I was used to doing it the most, and it's still a good technique to have, so I'm going to show you that as well. So I'm going to take the existing layer. I actually want to recolor it, but all I have to do to do that is hold Alt, drag it over, uh, transparency is still locked, and I can just color right over top of this uh, sphere here. So what I'll do is pick, uh, let's do a, start off with a soft or medium blue, something like this, and let's just go ahead and paint this right in. Get rid of all the tones and everything. So that lock transparency feature is really helpful. Okay, so now the, the old school method that I probably have used the most. And I would do this more in a grayscale method at first and then overlay color. But I'm going to go right to color as I started with the blue here. So I'll select a darker uh, blue, relented dark here. And I would, I would be playing around constantly with the opacity and flow because I just couldn't get the hang of selecting and doing the half tones. So again, I'm just going to show you the way that I was used to doing it. Just so it gives you a variety of ways to execute your effects because no one way is going to be right for every artist and there's times that you're just going to want to mix it up and play around with uh, your effects anyways. So it's good to have a few different ways to approach this. So you can see just by lightly pressing here and there um, I can get a little bit of gradation and texturing. And let me go into here and show you my settings again. I know you're starting to see a pattern here. And, oh, see I'm already wanting to alt and select and because I'm, I'm starting to do that more with my painting. But this particular way, I want to get all my variation of tones in there. Uh, see I want a little bit darker blue into this, this area right here. And then I'm going to use the smudge brush and blur tool to, uh, to blend these out. Which I think is probably the easiest way that combined with the soft airbrush. And I do want to stress that you don't want to use any one of these techniques. You want to use them in conjunction to get the most variety in your paintwork. Your, your paintings will definitely stand out. And you, you want to know also when to blur certain things and when to leave things in focus. And we'll talk about that in another video. Okay, so now I'm going to the Almighty Smudge Brush and the settings that I showed you before with the Blending Brush Smooth. I'll show you once again. So right there, Scattering, Transfer, and Smoothing, which I don't know that that does anything. Okay, so now all I would do is just lightly press, and I'm actually, just so you know what I'm doing, I'm pressing and letting off. Pressing, letting off, very lightly. So I'm just using, and I'm only going in one direction at this point. I'm really trying to control the way that I'm blending. So I'm just pressing and letting off in one direction each time. See, and I'm just slowly doing that. And it's not a bad technique, it's just just a different technique. It's just a another way to skin a cat, I guess. Which is a very obscene term and I hope my cat just didn't hear that. So yeah, just, I mean, it, it's still does the job. It's still a good effect. It's just, I don't know. I, I I don't know why. I just really like the first one. I like that little bit of texturing that you get. And the more you do that, you'll see when certain things work out well with that and certain things work out well with this. Okay, so now I'll select uh, an even lighter tone. Again, I can hold Alt there and see where I'm at. Go really light blue in here. Start real light and kind of do some... Uh, Circular shapes right there. Real light down here where the bounce light is. And keep in mind these are good places to add another color if you've got multiple uh, colored lights in your scene. And again with the blending brush. Just like that. And say that, you know, say that that little bit of texturing was still too much for you. You just didn't like that. You thought it, this is supposed to be a little bit smoother in some areas. Also keep in mind that you can go to the Blur tool, size that up, and the Blur tool will even take out a little bit of that artifacts, 
or artifacting. I really can't get that word down. And, you know, so you can use that as well, which I don't even see it doing much. What's going on here? Let's zoom up and check the work. I don't want to mislead you. Yeah, it's doing something. It's just very light. Let me see. I've got strength all the way up. What's my settings on this guy? Well, you can tell I don't use this one uh, very much. So that's the settings there. And I guess what you would do too is go back and forth in different directions. But it, that's too much work for me. I would probably just go to the, um, if I really wanted to soften this up, I would go to the soft airbrush. If I wanted to apply more texture to this middle one, I would use these outside effects. So there you have it. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of how to blend your work and even though it's on a basic sphere, it's always good to start with something like this, do your exercises, and then figure out in your scenes what applies to what. If you want more texture, then you're going to lend to these outside methods. If you're doing skin tone, you would start with this uh, airbrush effect in the middle. Um, and keep in mind, you're always going to want to add little bits of hard shadows with your work as well. And to do that, I'll show you uh, as a quick test one. If you took this center sphere here, and you took like a lasso tool for instance and I'll just do this freehand I don't know if it'll come out perfect now remember I've got my transparent pixels locked so I can just simply take this and maybe select from this tone maybe darken it just a little bit more and let's go with a soft airbrush just because it's easy to we're gonna get the hard edge from this line that we created the transparent pixels is gonna keep us locked into this area and then the soft airbrush is going to allow us to start with the hard edge and then blend off like that. So there's, you know, that's how you would add a hard edge effect and then say that was too much for you. Then you could just get into, you know, whether it be your soft airbrush effect like this, you could select here and then size this brush down and just slowly paint that back and soften up the edge of it. Something like that. So it's all those combination of effects that come together, kind of culminate and make a good digital painting. So hopefully this video has been beneficial for you. If it has, be sure to like, subscribe, and please share the videos. And let me know what you think in the comments section below and what you'd like to see in the future. I try to answer video requests when I can. And as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.